we thank God for all of you. Amen. Let me share with you a passage of scripture and we'll quickly be out of your way. Psalm 130. Psalm 130. I was talking with a friend of mine, the Reverend Antonio Lawrence. He came, actually came to visit just a few weeks ago and we we walked around the church. I showed him the length and the breadth and the depth of Greater Bethel. But he is preaching a series called uh, Psalms in the Key of Life. And so all summer he's preaching from, I wish I was smart like that, could do stuff like that. But he and I were talking this week and we began to talk about the Psalms and how God just moves and speaks and, and sends the right Psalm at the right time to give us the right word. And so all week long I um, was preaching at the revival and I was preaching uh, in the Valley of the Dry Bones. All week stayed in Ezekiel. And I was really preaching about hope. And, and uh, so I'm just reading, just thumbing through uh, Psalms. And I fell upon this Psalm. Psalm 130. Um, just want to look at the seventh verse of Psalm 130. It says, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. And I want to talk for a few minutes on the subject of when hope is enough. When hope is enough. Dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you. God, use me to say a word to these your people. In Jesus name. Amen. What do you really need in order to make it through tough times? We've been dealing with some tough times. Not only in our personal lives, but even within our church. We have a building that we are trying to repair. And we're trying to repair a building without borrowing any money to do so. And it's a monumental task. And really, as I talked to Sister Blackett just a few days ago, the only thing that we have is hope. There are many experts who offer loads of advice about how to survive the difficult times that we face today and we will continue to face in the days to come. Financial experts are giving tips about investments and financial management. Health experts are giving checklists to follow to protect us from the flu and other sicknesses. Security experts are warning that crime might increase. And in doing so, gun sales are increasing. And everything that offers protection is in demand. Employment experts show, the laid, show to laid off workers how to retrain themselves for the workplace after they are laid off. Everyone seems to know what we need to survive and prosper during tough times. Yet the Bible's answer is very simple. We should take all the precautions that we can. But in taking those precautions, we must never lose hope. Because really, all that we need is God's grace. And if we maintain the hope of God's grace, that will be.
be enough. Sometimes we don't hope in the Lord. We begin to take matters into our own hands. That's what happened when a local dry cleaners found itself short on business. To boost the business, the owner started a new promotion. Every person who came to his business with a child during the hot days of the summer would get a free ice cream cone with three scoops. The owner's friends were skeptical that such a promotion would help the laundry business. They were critical of his high hopes to, to which one of his friends replied, high hopes has nothing, or I'm sorry, which he, he replied, high hopes has nothing to do with it because it's a, it's a proven fact that little children will waste chocolate ice cream on everybody's clothes. All I need is for the sun to keep shining and free ice cream and my business will stay afloat because that will be enough. All of our precautions are wise and advisable. But in reality, all we ever need in any situation is God's grace. Israel was being of enemies and it tried to amass a great big army of themselves large enough to meet the oncoming attacks. Gideon first assembled thousands of warriors and then finally reduced the thousands down to 300. He soon found that his 300 soldiers were too many because in the middle of the night God took action and in the middle of the night the entire army of enemies had ran away. He had 300 men, but he didn't need any of them. He had the power of the Lord on his side, and that was enough. Hope is often defined as believing in a positive outcome related to our situations. Hope is the feeling that what is wanted can be had, or the events will turn out for the best. In Greek mythology, Pandora had a special box that contained all of the dangers and all of the calamities that a human could ever face. And once the box was opened, Pandora would release all of the misfortunes upon the person, but she would hold back hope. And just as humanity struggled in dealing with everything that had come out from her box, Pandora would then let out hope and the society would survive. Our hope is often reflected in our songs. There was a gospel singer named Dorothy Coates and she released a song that was immediately popular back in the 40s and 50s. Its simple words echoed a great faith that our Lord was sufficient to help us through any, any storm. Her song said, well, all the mean things you said don't make me feel bad. I can't miss a friend that I've never had. I've got Jesus, and that's enough. You may scorn me and turn your back on me. I've got God's arms wrapped all around me. I've got Jesus, and that's enough. 1968, Roberta Martin recorded a song that is still popular among some African Americans around the world. His lyric says, I have hope when trouble comes my way. I have hope since Jesus came to stay. I have hope when things are not well with me. I have hope. It's a beautiful hope that has set me free. Hope is one of the 12 qualities of the Christian described in Galatians 5 and 22 as a fruit of the Spirit. It's based upon our faith that no matter how difficult our times, God is able to deliver us. We rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus knows all about our troubles and that when the timing is right, he will respond to our need. And that's our hope. And that's that beautiful hope that sets us free. Now in this text, we see David as the distress that surrounds him and places his hope in the Lord. David has been characterized as a man after God's own heart. But he's one whose life mirrors that of the average person. 
Yeah, he was a man after God's own heart, but his life is filled with flaws. Yes, he's a man after God's own heart, but he slipped and he sinned as well. And in this text, he is in deep distress and he laments the troubles of the nation. He offers hope to Israel by pointing to his own personal iniquities and troubles and testifying as, how, as to how God delivered him from them. In Psalm 130 verse 1 he says, Out of the depths I have cried to you, noting his personal troubled history and adding how he placed his hope not in himself, not in his accomplishments, not in his achievements, but in the Lord. Additionally, he shares his experience that he, he waited or hoped or trusted in the Lord, even as those around him trusted in their own devices. So at, at the fifth and the sixth verse, we read, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they who watch for the morning. His conclusion is that when we are surrounded with trouble, we should place our hope in the Lord. That's the meaning of the seventh verse, says, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Hoping and trusting in the Lord has two results, and that's mercy and plenteous redemption. It is better to place our hope in the Lord rather than the devices of people. And so when times are tough, the word of God teaches us not to misplace our hope and trust, but to place it solely in the hands of God. And so there are three things that I want you to keep in mind. First thing I want you to keep in mind is that you need to hope in the Lord. We're given direction about where to place our hopes. And the seventh verse of the 130th Psalm says, I will hope in the Lord. It means that we place the focus of our belief and faith in the hands of God. It does not mean that you do not till the soil, you do not plant the seeds. It means that your hope is not in the soil, your hope is not in the seeds, but that God will provide an increase one way or the other. That's the secret to overcoming difficult times and achieving perfect peace when all around you is in panic. And those who hope in the Lord focus on the fact that God is the deliverer and God is the provider. Focusing on God is not naivety, it's not irrational, it's simply recognizing that there is power that goes beyond anything in this world. So rather than fear what you will do if your job lays you off, focus on the fact that even if the job doesn't work out, God can make a way, God has made a way, and God will make a way. Rather than fear what may happen if you get a bad diagnosis from a good doctor, focus on the fact that even if the news is bad, God is able. In every situation, no matter how bad it is, keep saying, tell God, keep, God says, keep your eyes on me. That's what David declared in Psalm 121 when he said, I lift my eyes on to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Well, secondly, with him, there comes mercy. When times are difficult, each, each one of us pleads for mercy. Y'all know how we say, Lord, have mercy. Is a common saying. Have mercy alone is insufficient because we have remind we are reminded that with Him we have mercy. Mercy is relief from our troubles, even though we might have brought them upon ourselves. Mercy is granting a favor that we do not deserve. Mercy is receiving another blessing in a time of need, although we have squandered all the other blessings that we've already received. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 and 23 is a passage that addresses this subject. 
The prophet Jeremiah lamented over the condition of Israel, but at the same time, he recognized that every day God was actually giving them a new mercy and a new blessing. It says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. This is the idea, this is the thesis that the songwriter used when he penned the words, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hands have provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Well, lastly, with him comes plenteous redemption. When we hope in God, he promises restoration and he promises redemption the seventh verse uses the adjective plenteousness and it describes the nature of our restoration and, the, and plenteous is defined and it means abundant the living bible describes plenteous as armloads of blessings it is in a range of meaning great growth in grace and abounding usefulness and high spirituality and perfect preparedness for heaves. It all means that by placing our hope in God, we will be restored in a whole lot of ways spiritually and physically. The reason we have hope in difficult times is because he has promised us plenteous redemptions. That means those who have hope can stay calm in the midst of crisis. You can have peace in the midst of problems. You can enjoy gladness in the midst of sorrow. You can receive assurance in the midst of afflictions. You can press on in the midst of your pain. You can be fruitful even in times of famine. You can have joy when you have no money in the bank you can still go on because you have hope we should resolve that no matter how tough the conditions become we will continue to trust in the Lord we will trust in the Lord because God is our refuge and our strength he's a strong place to hide in the midst of storms in times past God proved himself to be a refuge and a place of shelter he's the same God that we have served in days past and his power has not weakened nor diminished come what may it's a good idea greater Bethel to keep trusting in the Lord and we trust in the Lord because history has shown us that those who trust in the Lord they can face the unknown and they can do so without fear we trust in the Lord because saints who have trusted him have been rewarded with answered prayers and a few earthly pleasures and heavenly glory we are not by ourselves greater Bethel Noah trusted in the Lord and he brought him through a great flood Abraham trusted in the Lord and he showed him a lamb in a ram in the bush Ruth trusted the Lord and she found happiness while cleaning the fields Moses trusted the Lord and he led Israel out of bondage Daniel trusted the Lord and he protected him in the lion's den Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they trusted in the Lord and he shielded them in the fiery furnace Job declared that his health was failing his children were called his money was lost but in spite of it all, he will trust in the Lord. I can hear him. I can hear this sick withered man covered in boils. I can hear him saying, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. We'll continue to place our hope in the Lord. Because when we are sad, the Lord gives us a fountain of joy. When we are at fault, the Lord will be our stronghold of forgiveness. When we are weak, the Lord will be a pillar of strength. When we are discouraged, the Lord will be our pool of inspiration. When we are defeated, the Lord will be our crown of victory. When we are in darkness, the Lord will be our light. When we are lonely, the Lord will be our friend. When we are helpless, the Lord will be our help. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my strength. He's a very present help in times of trouble. I heard the
the songwriter declare, I trust in God wherever I may be, out on the land or in the raging sea, though come what may, from day to day, my heavenly father watches over me, he cares for me, say yes, though pillars roll, he keeps my soul, my heavenly father watches over me, say yes. take my seat. I done, I done put my children to sleep. So as I, as I get ready to take my seat, let me, let me share with you a story about a family who was up in the country and they, they walked the paths over the hills and the valleys in order to visit their relatives. And so one night the father walked with his wife and his children and they walked along the beaten path. But a sudden fog came upon them and no one could see anything because of the thick fog, but the father kept moving at the same pace. And the son called out to his mother. He said, Mama, don't we need to slow down? We we can't see where, where we're going. And Mama said, I can't see how to put one foot in front of the other myself. But your father has walked this trail since he was a boy. And, and when he walked back and forth to Grandmama's house, he, he walked this trail. And when he carried wood for Aunt Carrie, he walked this trail trail and when he had to carry water from the well he he walked this trail and when he came home late at night from working in the field he walked this trail no son I, I can't see anything but your father knows the way and since your father knows the way we'll just hold his hand you may not be able to see how to put one foot in front of the other but your father in heaven he knows the way so hold to his hand hold to God's unchanging hand I have hope that the same hand who took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed the multitudes he can feed me I have hope that the same hand who healed the sick he can heal me my hope, my hope, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus, his blood, and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock. I stand sinking sand say yes yes my hope is not in what I can do my hope is not in what I have my hope my hope is in God say yes to me on Wednesday night and, and I, I, I remembered her face because she worked at my, my children's school and, and I remembered her face but I didn't remember her being so small and, and so skinny but I remembered her face and she came to me and she told me who she was and I said yes you you were at Tommy's Road with with my children she said yes I remember your son and, and she went on and she was talking and she said I have pancreatic cancer and, and the cancer has spread to my lungs and, and it spread to my spinal cord and, and the doctors are saying that it's not good she said I just want you to pray for me because I know what the oncologist has said but I know what I believe I still have hope because the same God who formed me is the same God who keeps me. I still, I still have, have hope. I have hope because my faith is not built upon, 
is not only built upon what I read in the word of God, but my faith is also built upon what I see God doing in your lives and what I know he's done in my life. I just got a text message on, I got a phone call on, on last Sunday from Sister Kay Gibbons. She called me and she said, I know that the missionaries are taking pictures today and, and I know that I'm a stewardess and I and I need to be in the church to, to help serve, but the ambulance is on the way because my daughter cannot breathe. But I have hope because when I look in this congregation right now, the woman that could not breathe just seven days ago, the woman whose heart was unresponsive responsive just seven days ago is sitting in the pew I still have hope I have hope I have hope I, I have hope I, I still have hope I have hope because a few weeks ago I took my wife on a on a field trip this is just Joyce we went on a field trip I I, I typed in an address in in my GPS and I took her I took her on a field trip I took her over to 201 Grandin Grandin Road and I showed her and I said this is the greater Bethel that I grew up knowing this is the church and we walked we walked all over the church and we we saw them them uh, townhouses next door and I told her that was the field I used to we we have meetings and we would cut through that field and go over to the Bojangles I, this this was that was my old stomping ground I took her over there and, and I began to, she don't really know the whole story and I don't even know the whole story but I told her some of the stuff that I knew and some of the records that I read and some of the <laughs> so I told her I told her, I went over and I told her some of that and I told her how what we had we no longer had and, and we had to go to the funeral home and you know funeral home is a place of death and, and how, how we were worshipping in, in a place of death, we were calling on the name of the Lord in a place of of death and how God moved one day and how God gave us now I have hope brother yes, I have hope because as bad as the situation was as bad as the situation was if it didn't happen, we wouldn't be here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. God uses the foolish to confound the wise. So I have hope, Miss Mary Alice, that even though I don't have the $43,000 that I need to fix that roof, I have hope that we're going to have it. I know that God is able and if he blessed us before he will do it again I have hope and if I have hope that's enough let us stand all over the church let us stand all over the church and maybe you're here today and you're not saved maybe you're you're here and you don't know him as savior of your life. I invite you to come now. We may minister unto you the plan of salvation. If you're here and you're not saved, I invite you to come. Or if you're here and you want to unite in membership and fellowship of Greater Bethel, I invite you to come. You were a member at one point in time. And something happened over the years and you stopped coming. And you started back. I invite you to come to let your brothers and sisters know that I'm here. I'm back. So if you want to be saved, if you want to join our church, if you want to renew that membership vow, I invite you to come.
the name of Jesus, we thank you for the assembling of your people. Bless us, God, that we not lose hope. God, we ask your healing power to fall upon those that may be sick. God, we have hope that healing is on the way. God, I ask that your power would fall upon families who have strained relationships. Bless that husband and wife who are on the verge of divorce. Bless those children who are on the verge of violent acts against their families. Heal old wounds, God. God, bless feelings of inadequacy as parents. God, we ask your blessings upon our church. God, you've been so good over 122 years. And God, we don't lose hope because we know that as you have carried us before, you will continue to make ways. God, use us to be a blessing to the men and women in this community. Use us, God, that we may be your vessels to feed the hungry. Use us, God, that we may be your vessels to find cheer for the fallen. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Oh, no.